All right, let's bow our heads in prayer, please. Father, thank thee for these lovely meetings of gatherings of God's people and so many that have come from far. And I believe some have left to go home now already before this last meeting. But we do bless thee for everyone that did come, even if it was just one moment, one night, one meeting. And we pray that nothing will be lost or fall to the ground, but that the Holy Spirit will continue to take that message even that one, uh, to hound after the hearts of people till they yield everything to God and go through with God and walk in all the light they're given and stagger the powers of hell on this earth. So come now, this last meeting, wash me afresh in the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son that cleanses us from all sin. And fill me with the Holy Spirit. And visit us in this last meeting rebuke Satan away by the risen, resurrected power of Christ and put a hedge around us to protect us from all the powers of darkness. Bless good Daniel, Phoebe, and every single person attached to arranging these meetings where I had such a privilege of being here with them. I'm so blessed by their lives. Come bless us now, for Christ's sake, in his glory only. We seek in his lovely name. Amen. Joel 3 verse 14. Multitudes. Multitudes in the valley of decision. Multitudes. Multitudes in the valley the valley, the valley of decision. Psalm 14, verse 12. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. Psalm 10 verse 4. There is none among them, none among them that calleth unto me. Hosea 7 verse 7. Ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. John 5 verse 40. Acts 24 verse 24. Felix sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith of Christ. And as he reasoned, as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. As he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled. Felix trembled. And answered, Go thy way. Go thy way. For this time
when I have a convenient season. I will call for thee. I will call for thee. Acts 26, verse 27. King Agrippa, believest thou? Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost persuaded now to believe. Almost persuaded. Christ to receive. Seems some poor soul to say, Go, Spirit, go thy way. Some more convenient day. On thee I'll call. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. How long, how long hold ye between two opinions? How long hold ye between two opinions? 1 Kings 18.21 Choose you this day whom ye will serve. Choose you this day whom ye will serve. Joshua 24 verse 4. Joshua 24 verse 15. Now. Now is the accepted time. Now is the accepted time. Behold now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2. Today, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. Hebrews 3 verse 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Isaiah 55 verse 6. Good and upright is the Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Psalm 25 verse 8. I will instruct thee. I will instruct thee. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. Psalm 32 verse 8. The wicked shall die without instruction. The wicked shall die without instruction. Proverbs 5. 23. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. But, but to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. Psalm 50, 23. To him that ordereth his conversation aright, Will I show the salvation of God? God now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. 
God now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Acts 17, verse 30. Who will have all men to be saved? Who will have all men to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth? 1 Timothy 2, verse 4. God now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Repent ye therefore. Repent ye therefore. And be converted. Be converted. That your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be blotted out. Acts 3 verse 19. Whoso confesseth and forsaketh his sins, the same shall have mercy. Proverbs 28 verse 13. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Be not deceived. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. There shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. Revelation 21 verse 26. What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Psalm 89 verse 48. There is no man. There is no man that hath power over the spirit in the day of death. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 8. For then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God. Who gave it? Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7. The issues of death. The issues of death. Psalm 68 verse 20. Firstly, the sting of death. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 56. The sting of death. There is the fear of death. The fear of death. Hebrews 2, verse 15. The pains of death. Acts 2, verse 24. The sorrows of death. The sorrows of death. Psalm 18, verse 4. The issues of death. Firstly, the sting of death. Secondly, The day of death. The day of death. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 8. The day of death. Firstly, the death of the wicked. The death of the wicked. Ezekiel 33 verse 11. When the wicked man dieth. Proverbs 11 verse 7. Those that have not sought the Lord. Zephaniah 1 verse 6. 
It is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, after this, the judgment. After this, the judgment. Hebrews 9, verse 27. I saw the dead. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. Every man. According to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, verse 12 to 15. As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Ezekiel 33 verse 11. But, but, how dieth the wise man? Ecclesiastes 2 verse 16. How dieth the wise man? Precious, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. <coughs> Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalm 116, verse 15. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Revelation 14, verse 13. The righteous hath hope in his death. Proverbs 14, verse 27. We know, we know that we have passed from death unto life. We know that we have passed from death unto life. 1 John 3, verse 14. <coughs> he that believeth in me, though he were dead, Yet shall he live. John 11 verse 26. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. The gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6, verse 23. We know. We know. We know that we have passed from death unto life. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. That we are the children of God. Romans 8 verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. 1 John 5 verse 10. 
therefore being justified, therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5 verse 1. The peace of God, the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Philippians 4 verse 7. My peace, my peace give I unto you. My peace give I unto you. John 14 verse 27. Multitudes. Multitudes. Multitudes in the valley of decision. In the valley of decision. Choose you this day. Choose you this day whom ye will serve. I stood with a young man from a godly home who was filled of sin and rebellion. And in anger, as I played with him as he stepped onto this motorbike, angry with me, I said, you could die Within minutes on that thing, there's no protection if you're in an accident and you are going to hell. You know the way. You have parents that have prayed for you from before you were born to this day and you still, you could die within moments and face eternity without God and as a sinner. Don't take a chance with your soul. Don't take a chance with eternity. I'm begging you, come back, pray with me. And there he was, revving louder and louder to drown out my voice on this motorbike. Tears coming down his face, trembling in the valley of decision. <laughs> Goes off. Within a short while, Involved in an accident, his body cut in half. Dying. Dying. In the valley of decision. I was with an old man, a godly old preacher, when I was just a young preacher. And after the service, as the people were streaming out, this very big farming man, Walking past this Mr. Haramsa, this godly preacher of our mission. And Mr. Haramsa said to him, Sir, won't you come back and pray with me to seek God to save your soul before you leave this building? And the old man was upset. He said, No, thank you very much. I do not feel to do that. Pride of his countenance will not seek after God. Mr. Harimsa did something that was unheard of in our country. And especially from him, for he was so reserved and refined and careful. He followed this room up the steps to the entrance and he took hold of his hand, his arm, and said, Worm, uncle, forgive me, I don't know why, but I know I must beg you not to leave this building tonight without seeking God to save your soul from judgment for eternity. I beg you. I beg you to come back and pray, but don't walk out that door. And Harumsa started weeping. The old woman was so angry and offended, he ripped his hand away 
Lost me eight men. Leave me alone, man. Folks at the derby bodies, dead still at the way, he shouted. He turns to the door, feeling bad as everyone standing still is looking at him. No one screams like that at a preacher for no reason. Mr. Harum, sir. I will come back tomorrow night to your next meeting. And maybe then I will pray with you. But you had no right to offend me tonight and to embarrass me in front of all these people. You shouldn't have done that. He walked out the door. The next morning we walked down the street in the town. Vehicles, suddenly a horn blows. <laughs> Everybody screams. About as far as that wall is from where I'm standing, lay this old uncle, stone dead, from the man who begged him and wept the night before. There was never going to be another meeting. Tomorrow night was never coming. That was God's final call. Be careful what you do with this message as you sit here tonight. I'm begging you. Today is the day of salvation. If you will harden not your hearts, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. I'm begging you. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. I stood in a very large uh, church years ago in a town called Dundee in the Tal Zulu land of Africa. And at the end of the sermon, when they were singing a hymn, I stopped and I said, listen, come to Christ because you don't know for sure you will be alive by the time you get to your house tonight. None of you. How can you be sure? I pointed to the back row. There was a man standing with a lot of children and his wife. I said, sir, you, your whole family in the back row. You could all be dead. Every one of you could be facing eternity. Are you saved? Have you prepared to meet with God? See, God, sir, and your children, your wife will come with you. He did. They got up. They left the building before they got to their home's front door. They were all slaughtered by some political maniac. Oh, that didn't happen because I said that that was going to happen. That was God's final call. Don't you believe God was not in that? Or in Mr. Harms pleading with that old man. Don't you believe God's grace is not there to say one final cry in a way you could die dead minutes later? Don't you believe this just happens? Twenty years went by before I dared to preach on that incident in Dundee. Because it so shook me and the community that they were killed that night, the whole family. Twenty years I stood in a Dutch Reformed church, building filter capacity of a town called Carolina in the northern Transvaal of Africa. And I, for the first time, recalled what happened in Dundee twenty years before that I dared to actually preach about it. And I said, sir, and I pointed to the back room. How do you know you will be alive tonight before you go in your front door? How do you know you won't all be dead, you and all your children? Why did you seek God to? How can you be sure? Don't take a chance with eternity. They sought God. They drove home as they parking the car in the farm yard and getting out slaughtered by some insane man. The whole family. 
You think that happened because I said it? No, no, no. That was going to happen. That was God's mercy because that man had never heard the gospel in his entire life until that night that that happened. Do you think that just is not God's orchestration of love for people he died for? Newspaper of the whole area, front page, preacher warns. You could die before you get to your house tonight. How can you be sure? Family dies before they walk through the front door. The whole family. Hmm. Multitudes in the valley of decision as you sit there even. You're in it, you know. You're in it right now. I saw a young man on a tractor in a factory many years ago in Port Elizabeth in Africa, Eastern Cape of Africa. And the owner had asked me to come and visit him. So I was waiting for clearance and I stood there looking over the factory while they were clearing me before they called me up with the loudspeakers that I was cleared to go up to this Christian who owned the company. Well, I looked at this fellow on this tractor, this forklift, picking up these big boxes and containers all over the factory. And he looked at me, and he smiled. And as I looked at him, my heart broke to such a degree that he stopped the engine as he saw the tears coming down my face. He just looked at me. I walked down the steps, and I said with a loud voice, with tears coming down my face, Sir, you need to seek God to save your soul from judgment in hell. You need to seek him through Christ, who died for you. You need to seek him now, before you do something terrible in this world. He started weeping, shaking his little whip, trembling his eyes. Two weeks later, front page of the newspaper, his photograph. That night, he took a girl off the streets, him and his friend, and dragged her into the felt did the most outrageous things to her. And then, in his wickedness, stabbed her 42 times, ripping her apart, leaving her for dead like a dog. But she survived some amazing miracle. There's a film on her life right now in our country. And what happened? She crawled inch by inch, holding her stomach together, and got to the street, and they found her. The ambulance, the police hospital. Somehow she survived by mercy, total mercy to survive that. Of course the description of this boy wasn't very hard because he had this incredible mohawk hairstyle or some stupid thing. Well, I read it was the night that I had spoken to him. You think that just happened? Coincident. Of course, the court case was terrible. Oh, there's a boy, rejection in his home, clinging to a little Satanist group in the school to belong to something. All these terrible things happening to him as he was delving into the evil. Voices, blaming everything. But eventually, with all these psychologists and preachers even talking about demon possession and voices and influences from Satan, you know, you, these things happen. But you still had the choice. You won't blame the devil to get off this. Eventually, the court case closes. And they pronounced him five lifetimes. He will never, ever be out of jail and his friend. He's too dangerous for society. And he said these words in the newspaper I read. I knew what I was going to do that night. My friend and I. We planned it, and we were going to do it. We were going to sit there waiting on that beachfront road where people walk, and there's a big empty felt behind us. 
I knew it in my heart. But God sent a man to warn me. And I knew it was God speaking to that man. But I closed my heart to God. Now I will suffer the consequences for the rest of my life. Be careful. Be careful what you do when God speaks to you before it's too late. Be careful. When I came to God, my friends all were shaken to the core. <laughs> this one friend of mine, Victor, phones me. They say, you've gone insane. It's religion. You're too good now for us. You don't want anything to do with us. Is that true? Meet me. I want you to tell me what's happened to you and what, you, what people are saying about you. Meet me. So we met at this little model dairy where he said milkshakes at boys. So he's listening. I say, and he's trembling like Felix. Trembling. Gets up, looks at me, tears coming down his face and runs out the door of this restaurant in the middle of a great city in Africa. So I paid and I went out after him. There he was standing, waiting. Tears stood on his face. He walks through the lights. It was the busy hour when everybody now is going home. Hundreds, thousands is coming out of the buildings, the cars, the streets is filled. Center of the city. He's standing there looking at me. I said, listen, I know I'll never see you again in my life. Unless you come to Christ also. I don't want to see you again. We serve the devil together. Why don't you come and serve God with me? Why don't you come to Christ? Give your life to God also. You know I would die for you. I would die for you. You're my closest friend on earth. But I can't have anything to do with you again. Unless you come to Christ now. And walk away from them all. Like I've had to. Because they'll draw you back. And me. He stood there with these people just pushing past us. And the bustle and the traffic and the cars. He's looking at me. A couple of minutes of standing there looking at me. Tears. His little lip was going, his eyes full of fear. And then he did something that startled the whole street. He screamed as if he was in pain, being whipped under conviction. No, 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 scream. It costs too much to be a Christian. And he turned and ran. Vehicle hitting him. He went across. Never saw him again. I will not and I cannot. I haven't got the ability to tell you how he died. So soon after that. Another friend. You sit where you are. Don't you move. I'm coming. I've got to hear all this from you. David. Huh? Listening. And I talk and I say everything I could. He looks at me for a couple of minutes in dead silence. Tears in his eyes. 
in the valley of decision. And he says, if you give your life to Christ, Keith, then I'm doing the same. He got on his knees and begged me to help him, found the Lord Jesus that day. Years went by, I was in Johannesburg, one of the biggest cities in the world. And this fellow gets hold of me, he looked like a tramp, and he pushes me down this alleyway between the buildings, away from people, and he just kept punching me and pushing me. I fell, he lifts me up, throws me against the wall. I said, I have no money. What are you doing? What do you want? Don't you know who I am, Keith? When he told me, I just started sobbing. What was left of him. He was the innocent one. Always scared, always disappearing. In this little gang we used to have, oh, to my shame. I couldn't believe what sin had done to him. He looked so old, haggard, his eyes black, his skin destroyed, thin, ruined by sin and drugs and moral decadence. He said, when you became a Christian, we all joked about you, Keith. We laughed about you. We joked. There wasn't a day they didn't joke about Keith Daniel. When you began to preach and people talking about you preaching, some heard we stood on the streets mocking and saying, we're Keith Daniel preaching. We preach about hell and judgment. There's no one laughing anymore, Keith. No one left. He told me of what happened to them all. Oh. No one laughed after. Very soon the laughter stopped, Keith. The crying started. The look at me. Look at me. You were right, Keith. I was wrong. They all were wrong. You made the right choice, Keith. We didn't. He couldn't get saved. And his death was terrible. Seek ye the Lord, while he may be found, is not a promise, it's a desperate warning and a fear for one soul. I'm not asking you if you're religious. I'm asking you as say you say from hell and sin. God have mercy on your soul, young lady. If you walk out of here unsaved, 